This is the eighth video for the wargaming of War Plans, War in Europe. I am playing the Germans. The game's artificial intelligence is playing the Allies. Let us load the game and proceed. Okay, well, more trucks added to the pool, which is good. We're at February 13th, 1942. Oh, Jesus, I didn't. Once again, I failed to read what I should do. These guys are at 93% effectiveness. Well, I'll wait and see whether my normal reinforcement schedule will put them at 100. If not, I'll give them some trucks. I've got 318 trucks. That's pretty damn good. Okay, I've got to have more units up here for this push. This push towards Kiev is going to be like a pincer attack. Straight across here and then up through here. <coughs> then this one down here is going to push like straight across there, but I'll probably wait until these guys push to Kiev because they'll be turning these two river lines. I don't know if I'm going to go into the Crimea. There's nothing really there of any significance. I may not go into there. And it's the Vastopol is really hard to get if you got a strong unit in there. Well, we'll see. Okay. What's this guy doing here? I'll transport them by rail up here. One, two. This army should be actually, actually be in Rouen. a little better. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can build. 323. We can build an infantry corps. I don't think I need to build any more trucks, so we won't. And I get our infantry corps. And
guess we can, it's okay to put it on six. That's all I got. Yep, it was. Uh, let's check the fins. It's pretty much snowing like crazy up there. So there's not much happening. In fact, nothing happening. The Russians never want to cross the border. Which is good. One less problem to worry about. Okay, the British. All right, they haven't gone into Vichy yet in Africa, but they will. All right, end of turn. Hopefully we can get right to the beginning of the invasion of Russia. We'll see. We should go pretty fast. I don't really... I don't anyway have that much to do. I'm sure AI is going to have some stuff to do. So they're playing the Russians as well as the West. And the Russians are probably starting to build stuff now. Cores and, yeah, infantry guard cores. Oh, my multiple, production multiple went up. Oh, 470. That's always good. Uh, I can just build two by two points. Build two cores, which I certainly will do. It'll come out in April, well, before the invasion. That's good. Let's see what I'm getting. Core. These roads are hard to see here. Well, in order for me to see the rails, I'm going to have to turn on rail movement. Okay, so this is obviously a rail hex. That's it. Just before I go into Russia, I'm going to take an inventory of my army. I'll let people know so they won't have to watch. Well, maybe I can do that offline. I'll try to do it offline. Okay, it's March 13th. 418. Wow. Now we're starting a truck. Can't build two this turn, but almost. 
I will next turn. Ah, oh, Panzer. It's my last Panzer Corps. To figure out where to put it. And I've got an infantry corps. All right, we got four four Panzer cores up here. <clears throat> four here, two, four, six down here. Let's put that one up here. <coughs> Got two armies here. there. That's it. It's getting the last of my reinforcements. I'll probably invade the first week of May. April is too iffy. You can get a clear turn in April and then it'll be followed by two rain turns. I'd rather wait till May. But this is as big a force as I could hope for. If I can't do it with this, it can't be done. I know, I mean, as far as I... Oh, German synthetic fuel comes online. As far as I, I, I'm of the belief, you cannot capture the German oil, 1941. I don't see any way that can be done. Now, whether it can be done if the Germans invade in 42, I don't know. We'll find out. But it can't be done in 41. Almost positive of that fact. Okay, gonna build two cores here. That's very good. And I get another one. Always oh, getting one, that's wonderful. <clears throat> okay, I should have a couple in reserve now. So let's put one in reserve in the north. And we'll put another one in reserve in the center. And then all of all the rest will go to the south. Okay.
Okay, it's now April 10th. Wow, we're getting very close. Okay. Build my usual. And I can build two of those. All right. Uh, another one is ready. Okay. Oh, that's right. I was going to put it as a reserve here. This is the last reserve. Put it in Warsaw. That's for the heck of it. See what the Britskis are up to. Uh, nothing. I don't think the Russians are going to do anything. Nope. Not good. April 10th. <coughs> April 24th. Okay. Large infantry corps. I can do two of them this turn, which I'll do. Next turn, I think I'll build some more trucks. Okay. Another core. Getting down to the wire here. Let's do another one. still snowing. It's the end of April. <coughs> hmm. Shit. May 8th. And it's raining. Uh, that's no good. Okay. Infantry core. Oh, just short of another one. Well, I'll, I'll save it. Build two next time. Okay, now I've got two ready. Be 
these could be the last of my forces available before I invade. And put them down here. Let's see who should get them. What the hell is this unit doing here? And this one. Send one of these up to here. Okay. I don't care about Persia. Jesus. Okay. Soviet Union declares war on Germany. Wow. I didn't know they could do that. Well, that's interesting. Okay. So, I don't have to worry about that nicety, and I am all set for it. Oh, see, that's why he ran away. Look at this. <laughs> Clever boy. Well, that's okay. Left a couple units behind. Oh, this is going to be an interesting game. So he abandoned the frontier. Wised up. Okay, well, first thing I've got to do, I want to count up what I have as far as units. That's going to take a couple minutes, unfortunately. So, we're going to say in the west and in Russia. And we're going to have headquarters. We're going to have armor corps and infantry corps. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't want to move anything. Six armies in Russia. I know I've got three in the West. Now armor cores. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, oh, shit, I screwed it up already. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen armor cores. That's pretty damn good. None in the West. Now infantry division. 
sections. One, two, or cores, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What's this? Oh, that's, I don't count that, twelve. That's not a combat core. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. 34 cores in Russia. Let's see how many in France. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh shit. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Now we have about 35 minutes since Russia declared war on me. Oh, I suppose I have to declare war on Russia. Let me look. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, Ruskies. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do here? Doop, doop, doop. This guy. This cannon fodder out here. Move this guy up. Okay, we'll get the big boys out here. takes care of those guys. Oh, oh Mechler. Those are always nice. Can't get too carried away here. I don't want to get too far ahead of my supply net. But we do want to spread out 
so we can bring up our air force. Okay, what can I build? Whoa, 659. Ooh. Let's keep that infantry coming. trucks. Oh, not enough. Oh, shit! What did I do? I build transport? God damn it. a fuck up first class fuck up build transport instead of uh, trucks those fuckers are expensive god damn it god damn it okay these guys are all going to be out of supply for the moment but they've got two turns of supply with them so let's bring up our air force Okay, let's see what we've got here. Let's turn off the supply so I can see what the combat odds are. Yep, I don't like that. 10 to 1, that's good. He, I took two hits, he took eight. That's good. Him up. Eight to one. I took one, he took nine. Ah, he's still alive. Uh oh, somebody lost their operation points. That one did. Eight to one. Okay, he took four hits, I took zero. And we'll push out. Jesus, this guy. 10 to 1. He took 11 hits, I took 0. Now as a refresher, I'll show you what I'm doing. The un units you want to use for your attack, you left click on the unit and you see that uh, white circle. For any unit after you designate the first one, you just have to hold down the control key and hover over the unit. See that's a green circle? That's another green circle. Then 
if you want to know the odds, you just hover over the unit you want to attack, 7 to 1. And then right click for the attack. So this says, I took three losses, he took one. Well, that's a tough bastard. Now it's 10 to 1. Okay, so he took four and I took one. And he's still alive. He retreated. Jesus. And it depends how many operation points you have. That'll determine how many attacks you can make. So you use operation points when you move, and then the ones that are left over, you can use to attack. So if you don't move, you have all your operation points, which for infantry is five, and for armor, I think, is 10. So once you start attacking, then units will drop off because depending on how far they've moved, they'll be out of operation points. You can see your operation points on the display right here. This, this display shows you how many you started out with. This shows you what you have. And this second display, when you press this, um, magnifier, you'll get the second display and it'll give you more information. If you don't want it, you just press the magnifier again and it won't give it to you. Otherwise, if you press the magnifier, it'll come up automatically. I always like to see the second display because it's easy for me to see the experience and the effectiveness on it. Okay, so we got this guy. 9 to 1. Okay, I lost 2, he lost 9. Now this one, we're going to use this. these three units. 6 to 1. I lost 2, he lost 6. Why didn't I use that unit? I guess I will now. This guy dropped off, it looks like. He's got 0 operational points. This guy's got 1. This guy's got 1. This guy's got one, so this is the last attack. It's 10 to 1, so he lost 7, I lost 1, he disappears. Ah, so I can just move into that hex. Okay. Now, that was Army Group Center. We've got Army Group North up here, we've got Army Group Center, and we've got uh, two... Well, we've got Army Group South, but it's actually divided up into three pieces. I guess you could say A, B, C. So we've got A that's going across under the Pripet Marshes for Kiev. We've got B, which is going for Kiev from the southwest. And then we've got C down here which is going across, straight across to get to Rostov. I won't get to Rostov this year, but hopefully next year. So, okay, let's go up here. Now we've got the big boys in action. Let's see how many we need. Jeez, it takes all four to get a 10 to one. Is that right? No, it takes three. Let's see. 10 to 1 is a top odd, so even if you have 50 to 1, it'll still show as 10 to 1. So 7 to 1. Now I want 10 to 1, so. And then we'll do this one down here. 10 to 1. Okay, he took 11, I took 0. That's what I'm talking about. So we'll push out to there. Okay, now this one, we've got three, ten to one, good. All I did was push that bastard down. Well, the 
Memphis Infantry. Now this is where the trucks are going to come in because I'll start losing effectiveness now as I move this infantry. So we got some operational points, 10 to 1. Okay. Christ, I, I shoved them further here. I got five casualties on him. I didn't get any of them myself, but now I've got to run him down with these guys in the backfield. him by train over here we'll close in on this guy now now let's see what my supply looks like Ooh. I don't like going in fours I'll go up here to five this guy should be like about an eight or seven of the Romanians and some of my spare units run these two guys down. I'm not going to divert the offensive for that. Okay, let's get rid of the supply. Now we've got this mech unit. Small one. Nine to one. It's blown away. Eleven hits, I took one. Four to one, I don't like that. He's got four operational points, that'll be one attack. Five to one. He got 11 hits, I got three and he disappeared. That's the way to handle that. Okay. These three guys are going against him 10 to 1. He got 13 hits, I got 0. Jesus. This must be shitty movement. Nobody can cross. Okay, do I have any operational points? No, yes. Two, seven to one, I'll do it. He gets six hits, I get zero. And I cross. Now this guy hasn't moved. Zero operational points. Yeah, he has. Okay. We'll just get these guys in the rear ready to move. Move these guys up best we can. Let's get this army up there. Okay, where the hell's our armies? Let's get them up there. Jeez, that's all we can move? You gotta be shitting me. Well.
right, now what I have to do is see which air units I can move up. Now, I've got my aircraft set on um, AI control, which means the AI is using my aircraft to support my operations. So if it turns, and you get two operational points per aircraft unit. Now you can use one to move and one to have combat, or you can move, move with two, which means you move farther. For instance, if I, where's one? He's used that one, see? You just have a circle. He used that one. Now, he didn't use this one, so if I wanted to move it, it'd take me one operation point to move that far, and it would take me the second one to, to move this far. It's a nice feature in the game. It tells you exactly how many you use. So all I'm going to be doing is moving these. And... If I can't move them, it means AI has used them in combat. And I still might, might be able to move. There still might, he might have had one combat, which means one operate, he used one operation point. And I can still move the unit because it's got an operation point, but I can only move it one using one. And, and it won't go to two, so like half its range. And if he hasn't used it, then I can move it to full range. So, and I can't, I can't move it in a prohibited hex. And that's the problem with some of this terrain down here. It's pro prohibited for trying to move it because you can't establish an air base. There's no good air base established there. Now he's used, looks like he's used everything. Oh, except this one, he didn't use this one. So I'm gonna move it up. Oh, what am I doing here? Now, what's he used down here? He almost always uses the Stukas and the fighters a lot of times. And he used that. He's, looks like he, oh, he didn't use the Stuka. Okay, we'll move him up there. And see, it's the one. If I wanted to move him too, I couldn't do it because he's had com one combat with this Stuka. But I'll move him there. That's good. Yep, he didn't use this guy, so we'll move him up there. And he didn't use this fighter. And the reason he might not have used it is because it was too far back. Fighters only have a range of six hexes. Oh, and this guy can move too. He's another fighter. He's probably too far back. Move him up. Okie dokie. That is my turn. Did I get any reinforcements? Yes, I did. I got a core. Yay. We'll move them by rail. my invasion turn. Well, it's not invasion. He declared war on me first. I had to defend myself. It's a defense turn. Well, let me see what he's got going on here. Just couldn't wait to declare war in Germany.
Now, I've set this to go fast, uh, AI movement, the fastest speed the game allows, because um, I want him to really truck on. But it, it hurts my eyes if I try to see what what AI is doing, it hurts my eyes, so I don't even look at the screen. But I set the setting on the slowest for AI to execute his moves, his uh, combat. So I, I, I want to see what the combat looks like. Although, as you'll see, I'll go to the combat reports and I can see in more detail what happened. But I, see, he's really running as fast as his ass can go. That's going to be an interesting strategy. We'll see if it works. Okay, now I'm going to check my supply. Oh, I turned off hexes. That's not what I want. Now, the best supply is nine. The absolute worst supply is one. If you're along a rail, it's always nine, except if the rail hasn't been converted. You can see right here, this is a nine, but then it goes to eight along the rail. It means that hex hasn't been converted yet. So with, the, with Russia, you've got to convert the hex. With the West, you just have to repair the hex. The reason is the Russian rails are a different gauge. I think they're wider. So you've got to relay the, the rails. And it takes a lot longer. In this game you can convert. The AI does it automatically. It's, it's two hexes a turn, but when I played a couple games, that's, that's too slow. That's, the, historically, they converted it at a faster rate. So I upped it to three. And as you get farther off the rail, your supply number goes down. And when you get into like bad terrain, like woods and swamps, then the number goes down even further. So you can see down here, it's a nine here across the rail. These two clear hexes are eight, but when you get down here, it's seven. Now over here, Here's the rail head. This next rail is an 8. It hasn't been converted yet. And then it falls off to a 6 here in the woods. And then it falls off to a 4. So when you get, it gets to be 4 or less, you cannot get reinforcements. You cannot get upgrades. Oh, shit, that reminds me. I've got to upgrade these units. Uh, and so you, you don't want to be, unless it's absolutely necessary, you don't want to be in, in the four. But if you're in five or six, your reinforcement rate and supply and everything is going to drop proportionately. It's not going to be at 100%. So you always want to be in like seven, eight, nine if you can. But it's not always possible when you're advancing in Russia. Uh, but I try to stay that way. Now you can see this hammer and tong. That means that rail is not converted. So you can see these are rail hexes, but they're not converted. So that's kind of nice. It makes it real easy to see. So... Well, the first thing I'll do, I guess, is most of where I'm going, I don't know what what the supply is. I can guess if it's in woods, it's going to be worse, and if it's in mountains, clear shouldn't be too bad. Like, this hex up here could either be a 7 or an 8, 
But this hex, it could be like a five or a six. So anyway, I'm gonna shut off the supply indications and I'm gonna go produce so I don't forget about that. 359. Okay, we'll make a headquarters. And then I'm going to produce some more trucks. Um, what have we got? 125 with the remainder. This time, she could change the order of this. I put trucks at the top. Okay, I'll produce a bunch of those. 80 of them. And I'll upgrade my reinforcements. These are like draft points to 250. Because I'm going to need that in Russia. Let's see what I get now. Oh, I get two cores. Good. Can use them. Now the green shows me where I can deploy them. Play that one there. And this one there. Okay. Now. I'm going to start giving these guys some trucks. I can't always give them trucks if they're in really bad terrain or they're in, they're out of supply. I think you, it automatically gives them four trucks and it boosts their effectiveness by four points. Now, you have two adjustments. Well, you have th three, I guess. Three adjustments to your combat strength. It depends the terrain you're in, obviously. Um, it depends um, what your experience is and you, like the Germans start out with 70% because they fought in Poland and France. But as they get into more combat, it'll go up. When new units come on, they'll probably come on at 70%. So that goes up, and that adjusts proportionally your combat value. So although you show an 18 for combat value, I, I'm, I think the way it works is like, you're going to multiply that times 70% for your experience. You're also going to multiply that times your effectiveness. And this unit is down to 85. And each time you have combat and each time you move, your effectiveness goes down. So let's say you have three combats in a row. You know, I'll have to pay attention on how, I think it's four or five points. So your effectiveness is going to go down real quick. So in effect, those two have a lot to do with your combat uh, value. And you really can't do much about experience except committing the unit to battle. But you can do a little something about effectiveness. Is you can use trucks to boost it. So for instance, this Panzer Division, I've got 318 trucks and its effectiveness is 85, and its combat value is 17. Now, your effectiveness, even if you increase it, it doesn't automatically increase your combat value. You know, it's a proportional thing, so you might have to do that twice before your uh, combat value increases. But your effectiveness will increase your combat value when you're having combat. So when I give this unit some trucks, the combat value may stay at 17, but the effectiveness might go up to 89. So in effect, the combat value does increase a little, but sometimes the combat value will flip up to 18 like the unit next to it. So I'm going to give it some trucks. Let's see how many it sucks up. 
geez, so six of them, and the effectiveness went up to 89. Now, the combat didn't go up, but next time maybe it will. So I'll give this guy some trucks. He's at 83. Up, oh, so he went to 18. It goes up to 87. This guy is 16. We'll give him some trucks. Goes up to 17, and his effectiveness is 87. You see why you want to build all those trucks? I always keep my armor in tip-top shape if I can, and then if I have anything left over, I'll give it to the infantry. Or if there's some infantry that's really hurt, I'll give it to the infantry. Uh, so this guy's at 80, and he's 17. I'll give him some trucks now. He's at 18. This guy is 82, and he's at 16. I'll give him some trucks. He's at 17 now. This guy's at 82. And you can't ignore this effectiveness. It'll get so low that, you know, you'll be fighting with half your combat value, so you'll have to take him out of action for a while. And when he's stationary, he doesn't do anything, he'll gain some effectiveness. I'll have to write down one of these days or look in the rules how much he gains. I think he gains three or four uh, effectiveness points. So we'll give him some trucks. He goes up to 17. We'll do this 18. It goes up to 19. This guy's at 90. He's pretty good, but let's keep him up there. 94. This guy's 17. It goes up to 18. Especially in the beginning of the campaign, you want these guys tip-top. Okay, he goes up to 19. And these guys have to be in decent supply. If they, if this guy was sitting on a four terrain, you wouldn't be able to do that. This guy goes up to 18. Okay, these are good. This is why you always want to build trucks. Now, the other big thing is specialty points. I've got 997. It takes 100 before you can distribute a specialty point. And I usually like to give the specialty points to the armor. And the specialty point I like to give them is, I'll show you this one. You click on, it says add specialty here. You click on that and it shows you the specialties you can give a unit. You can give them some anti-tank, which is a defensive thing. It'll, it'll give you a better defense against an armor attack. You can give them an engineer, which halves the river penalty. I, that's the one I like for the armor. You can give them elite, which adds 10% to experience. That's also handy. But I think the river crossing one is better in the beginning for armor. You can give them a heavy artillery, which you can negate one of the two entrenchments. If a unit remains stationary without having combat, it gets an entrenchment shovel, which I think is a 5% defensive bonus. If it sits there for two turns, it gets two shovels, and then um, you know it gets like a 10%. So you can negate one of those shovels. Then infant infiltrator, um, it helps on the retreat. And winter combat winterizes you like for Russia. So this unit, I'm going to give the engineer upgrade to, and I'll add that. And you can see in the upper left-hand corner of the unit, there's an E with a little badge. So he's got that engineering bonus. You can see another armor unit has that bonus up here too. 
Now I'm going to need it for all of these armor units because I'm going to be going straight across rivers. So I want to give all of them that bonus. Now is a good time to do it. Okay, there's that one. I had a lot of specialty uh, points. That one. Accumulated, so that was a good thing. And this one. And I've still got special D points, but I'm going to save them and see what happens. Because these other attacks may not necessarily be across rivers for a while. But I know this attack, if I'm going straight across here, I've got rivers to cross. Okay, so, you know, that's what you want to do. You, you, you want to uh, distribute specialty points if you've got them. And then you want to um, distribute those trucks. And then that's the end of my turn. 1031. Okay, we'll let the Ruskies go. Uh, we've gone a little long on this turn. Well, I'm going to let the Ruskies go. And then we'll end it. AI is pretty fast. Now look at him go up here. 178 units he was moving. And look at how fast it goes. No human could make that calculation. Uh-oh, that rat is attacking uh, those ships I have in Konigsberg. Must have to move them now. I don't care if he sinks them. I'm not going to use them. They cost oil. I don't want to burn oil. It's always dropping behind these units. I guess that's the way he gets rid of his junk. I suppose it's... Ooh, look, he's attacking Vichy. Now I have some units in Africa. I can move a couple Frenchies. It's vicious British. What happened? He's supposed to be an ally of France, not attack him. Oh, look at that landing. Jesus, there's only a couple French units there. The British should be able to handle them. Montgomery, he probably doesn't want to. He says, oh, there's too many of them. He outnumbers them ten to, or, or eight to one. And he says, oh, there's too many. He's like McClellan during the Civil War. So, well, if it gets, the odds get to ten to one, then I'll move forward. Okay. Oh, he, he sunk that old, the Schlesen, they sunk that old German battleship. Uh, well, you probably did me a favor. We'll we'll raise it and we'll make t armor cores out of it. Okay, let's see what the hell he did now. I hate the game where it shows all these directions and movement. I don't care about that. I I just care where the unit is. So he's left behind, as usual, a couple rear guards. Jesus. Left an army behind, but I don't... Look at the... God, the speed. He ran away. Faster than a speeding bullet. That's okay. I can't go too fast because my, I'll run out of supply. Look at... God damn. And he left an armor corps behind as a... Rear guard, why would you do that? That is a valuable core. Look at these guys. These guys are going to be all cut off. See, the thing is, well, maybe I, AI doesn't realize this, that I can't advance that far anyway. I've got to wait until those railroads are repaired. So any units he leaves behind is a good thing for me because 
Otherwise, I'd just be sitting there waiting for my uh, uh, rail to catch up. Meanwhile, I can surround these units and blow them away. And if they're crappy units, well, okay, that's better than nothing. But if they're really good units, Jesus, that's like food on the table. Okay, anyway, I better quit this. This is getting to be really long. So we'll save this. And we'll continue on next time.